Now to the States, where Super Tuesday takes place over in America, marking the biggest day so far in the 2024 presidential race. The day should offer a glimpse into Biden and Trump's strengths and weaknesses as they hurtle towards the November general election. One of the nominating contests will be held in Colorado, the state which recently had its bid to disqualify Donald Trump from the presidential ballot overturned by the US Supreme Court. Well, and uh, they worked long, they worked hard, and frankly, they worked very quickly on something that will be spoken about 100 years from now and 200 years from now, extremely important. Essentially, you cannot take somebody out of a race because an opponent would like to have it that way. Well, joining us now is chair of the Republicans Overseas UK, Greg Swenson. Greg, tell us what is in store. I mean, it's pretty clear, isn't it, that Trump is going to be the Republican candidate? Yeah, there's not a lot of mystery there, Alex. It's a good question. You know, what? where's the excitement? It's not exactly the most exciting Super Tuesday that we've had in, in a long time. So the outcomes are pretty clear. Biden's going to win the nomination and Trump is going to, going to win the Republican nomination. So not, not a lot of drama today. And will Nikki Haley finally see sense and pull out after tonight, in your view? Yeah, in my view, she will, because she's been pretty deliberate over the last few months saying that she will stick it out through at least until Super Tuesday. So I think this is her chance to, to call it quits. I doubt she'll win any states. You know, Trump is polling comfortably ahead of her just about everywhere. The, the only close one is Virginia, which is a little bit more moderate in nature as far as Republicans go. So she has a chance there, but I still don't think she'll win any states. There's a lot of rumours going about, uh, about whether this is actually going to be Trump versus Biden, whether the Democrats will go, well, clearly we're not going to win with Joe Biden and find some sort of trickery to replace him at the last minute. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think there's some validity to that. You know, six months ago, we were all speculating about who the Republican candidate would be, or maybe 12 months ago. And so, you know, but, but Biden is not looking so great now. You saw the, the polls that came out over the weekend, the New York Times Siena poll, it, and just about every poll since October has had Trump leading. And so, and, and especially on the issues, Alex, I mean, you know, nine of the top 10 issues favor Trump on policy. And, and I think there's a good chance that they sit down with President Biden in the summer and talk him into hanging up the cleats, so to speak, because, you know, at this point, it, it looks like the, the electorate is really favoring President Trump. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Supreme Court uh, overturning Colorado's bid to disqualify Donald Trump from standing as president uh, because of unsubstantiated charges that he somehow caused the insurrection on January the 6th, Capitol Hill and all that. Uh, you know, they might have uh, noted that under the American Constitution, you have to be found guilty of a crime before you can be persecuted for it. So he's not guilty of that, according to the legal system. So that was smashed That's down. Right. We've got other states like Maine were planning to do the same thing. They won't be able to do that. A few words from you, Greg, if you like, about the catastrophe of the Democrats' uh, strategy here, because uh, they thought they could to demonize this guy. They thought they could stop him through what he quite rightly calls lawfare. Uh, that tactic has exploded spectacularly in their face on two ways. First, they lost. And secondly, uh, it has made Donald Trump even more popular than he was before. That's correct. That's right, Kevin. And, you know, I've been saying this for months that, the you know, the, all this uh, weaponization of the justice system and now more recently the attempts to... to interfere with the election by removing him from the ballot has really helped him in the Republican primaries. Now it's, I think, spilling over to the general election. People, even independents and moderates, are looking at this and saying, you know, wait a minute. And, and you saw that with the unanimous decision from the Supreme Court yesterday. So th this is going to help him ultimately. And, and I think the Democrats are in real trouble. They're losing on the major issues. They've created the border crisis, the humanitarian crisis at the border, and they've created the inflation that people are suffering from. So, you know, people are going to look at this and say, OK, I might not like the unfiltered rhetoric coming out of Donald Trump. Some of us really like it, but some of us don't. And so but they're they're going to overlook that and say, how you know, how am I doing versus how I was four years ago? How's my pocketbook? Food prices are up 20 percent. Petrol prices are up 25 percent. Americans won't tolerate that. 
and they really don't like the open border that's creating a crisis, not just at the border level or in border states, but all over the country. And in, why, in, why are there the 10 guys cities. living in tents in my backyard as yeah, well? Yeah, exactly. Why, why can't my, you know, my children go to school because they're using the school as, a, as an asylum center? So this, this is all created by Biden and his radical policies. And I think people are going to look at that and vote for, for President Trump. Yeah, I mean, in many respects, uh, the change of leadership in America sets the mood music for the West and the sort of position that the West is going to take up on the international stage. Uh, in that respect, uh, do you hope that it is Trump and that he does get there and he becomes the president and makes the West safe again? Well, a absolutely. I mean, look, it's a binary choice. As you guys know, I, you know, I was behind Ron DeSantis. I thought it would, been, it would have been refreshing to have a different and younger candidate and also someone maybe a little more disciplined. But the people really like Donald Trump. You know, he's got a personality that appeals to people. And he's also, and this is the big mistake that the Democrats have made. The Democrats have just ignored the voters. They, they, they don't really care about working people throughout the country. They care about, you know, their sort of elite circles in Washington and New York and, and San Francisco at, at, while they're ignoring the electorate. And what, what we're finding is that the electorate has a, a real affection for President Trump and that, again, the, the lawfare and, and the attempts to keep him off the ballot with, you know, the ultimate election interference is really backfiring. And people just don't want to tolerate that, and, and especially Americans. We're hearing, uh, Greg, more and more stories about uh, Latinos and black communities actually uh, starting to support Trump. Uh, also, yeah. also uh, traditional Republicans, shall we say, moderate Republicans, who are a bit like yourself, maybe, who are always a bit circumspect yeah. about Donald Trump. You know, they look at his policies. Uh, yeah, okay, he's a, he's an unusual character, uh, but you look at his policies. Uh, they're, they're they're attractive to people. So what I'm saying to you is, more and more people who traditionally were against Trump, the Latinos, the black community, the yeah. moderate Republicans, are now filing in behind him. Uh, so if you will, uh, Greg, talk a little bit about the fact that despite what the de Democrats and polite so society seem to think, I think Trump has built up enough support to win the next election. Oh, absolutely, Kevin. Look, his policies delivered fantastic outcomes in 2018, 19, 20, especially for minorities, for women, for people at the lower end of the economic spectrum. So, so the, they look at the results that they saw in, in his administration compared to the debacle that Biden has created. So that's the first point. The second one is his policies are actually quite moderate. You know, I, I'm not a moderate Republican. I consider myself a conservative. But Trump's policies are actually much more mainstream, much more tilted to the center right rather than the conservative conservative wing of the party. And that appeals to a much bigger group of Americans. You mentioned moderates and independents. They're really attracted to Trump's policies. And then if you look at the Democrat policies, you know, uh, for example, abortion, which they like to talk about a lot, Trump's views on abortion are consistent with Western European abortion laws. He wants, he, he likes the idea of 16 weeks. That's actually higher than the average in Europe. The Democrat policy, for example, taxpayer funded up until birth, polls at 13 percent it even polls at only 18 amongst democrats so you know who's got the more extreme policies open border that's an extreme policy he's being run by the open border wing of his party so you know that whereas the trump policies on the border poll very well with mainstream moderate america and the third thing is you pointed out kevin biden and the democrats cannot win without their coalition of African Americans, Hispanics, and young people. And those that coalition has cratered. He's not going to win the black vote, but if the black vote vote goes from 90-10 to 60-40, like it like it and, and it looks like it's going that way, Hispanics are, are going from you know 80-20 to actually favoring Trump. He'll he might very well win the Hispanic vote. And then you have young people that are fleeing from the Democratic Party. You saw that with you know, Javier Malay in Argentina. You've seen it in several countries in Western Europe. So I don't know that Trump is leading that. I think he's, he's actually taking advantage of that rejection of socialist policies. 
Yeah, so fast may it continue, I say. Now, let's go back to the idea that uh, the Democrats could be wargaming to replace the fossil at the last minute, and that <laughs> up until this yep. point, perhaps they've been curating situations to make sure that Donald Trump has lots of publicity and ends up being the Republican candidate because they got someone up their sleeves that they're going to usher in in the final stages and then go, ha, now we can beat you. Do you think that's possible? And if so, who could it be? Uh Alex, it's possible. It's still difficult because, first of all, there's no mechanism to do it. They can't just remove him. It has to be President Biden that voluntarily steps aside. And so, so, it, and then you'd have a real kind of, you know, inter-party fight amongst the Democrats, and that's never good for electoral reasons. It, it creates a lot of drama. You know, there is power in incumbency. So that the Democrats have to look at the value of the incumbency versus the value of having, as you said, a fossil, a, a man with obvious cognitive issues, you know, running for president. And then, and then the policies are so horrible. So look, it, it would, it, it's been done before. It was done in 1972. They removed the vice presidential candidate from the ticket. And frankly, it was done only four years ago in 20, 2020, when Bernie Sanders was clearly going to be the candidate for the Democrats. They realized he would lose by 10 points to Donald Trump you know, this was the Jeremy Corbyn of the United States of the Democratic Party. So they pulled Bernie Sanders. They talked him into stepping aside. They gave him some concessions. You saw it in Biden's policies where he was elected as a centrist, as a unifier. And all he's been is a is a divider, an angry one at that. But also he's proposed the most radical, transformative policies that we've seen since LBJ yeah. in 1964. So. You know, this has been a complete disaster. So if the Democrats were smart, they'll get in a smoke filled room like they did in 2020 and and talk Biden into stepping aside, find someone. You know, there's the rumors about Michelle Obama. I think that might be a stretch, but it, it checks a box as far as, you know, um, not nominating Kamala Harris, which obviously would be a failure. She's polling even lower than Biden. So, you know, they might get a lot of heat from the the, the diversity crowd of the Democratic Party, the ones that are obsessed with identity politics, that's going to really annoy them if they if they pull not only Biden, but they pull Kamala. But if they replace her with a quote unquote woman of color or they replace her with at least a woman like Gretchen Whitmer, um, you know, there are some moderate Democrats that that I think would do well, like Joe Shapiro from Pennsylvania. You know, that that would probably be a wise move because he'd do very well. Both he and Whitmer would do well in the upper Midwest, which is, you know, part it, which has a few of the really critical swing states. So, you know, it will really annoy the radical left wing of the party, which seems to be controlling Biden. But they're going to they're not going to vote for Donald Trump. So I think if they were smart, they'd find a, a Midwestern governor with some experience and, and some name recognition and they'd, they'd have a much better chance against Trump than Biden will. But what they're going to do, Greg, is uh, find someone who's actually still alive and can stand up straight <laughs> and isn't always eating an ice cream. That would help them. Yeah. Uh, Greg, it, great to talk would, to you. That Go would on. be a start. That, that would be a start. start. Yeah, very good start for the Democrats. Great to talk to you as always, Greg. Thank you so much. Great That's to Greg see you, Swenson. Kevin. Alex, thank you for having me. See you, Greg. All right, man, take care.